Is the camera glaring on it? There we go. That's my microphone for this video. The internet. It's a wonderful thing. It connects billions of people across the globe, showcases only the best that humanity has to offer, and it makes us look at our phones more than each other's faces. But there is a downside to every device that we own having access to this mother load of outer space. Personally, I just hate the feeling of never being detached. It's not like many people are contacting me anyways, but the fact that I'm expected to be 24-7 always contactable is annoying to me. Granted, nine times out of 10, it's no problem at all, I don't mind it. But that 10% is so annoying. No boss, I'm not certain if I'll be able to work on this date that's three months from now. Or better yet, somebody texts you, hey, are you busy? And you have to think to yourself, do I want to answer this honestly and risk being invited to something that I don't want to attend to? Or will I blow it off at the risk of my relationship with this person? This quote is being taken out of context, but I think it works well here. To quote the Washington Post on the topic of school lunches, it's a complex juggling act with federal regulations, budget realities, crunched lunch schedules, aging kitchens, cultural sensitivities, to say nothing of picky eaters. But where I cannot stand the internet to show its ugly face the most is in... Video games. Woo! I want to preface this by saying that there is more to life than video games. In fact, that's gonna be my new thing. At the end of all my videos, I'm gonna say, there's more to life than video games. Cheating. This is probably the most boomer complaint that I have to discuss here, but nowadays there is no such thing as being stuck in a video game. When I was little, yes, the internet was very much an established thing, in fact it was very old news. But I never considered using it to help progress in video games at the time, so when I needed to scour the entire sea for the Triforce shards in Wind Waker, my ass scoured the entire sea. Same with Ocarina of Time, Paper Mario. Why is streamlining this process so that you don't get stuck a bad thing? The sense of accomplishment? Like I said, this is the most boomer of my complaints. You know what really does piss me off though? Prosophia Gaming. This user got me to learn how to block YouTube channels from my feed, because every time a new video game comes out, this person would plaster endless spoilers on my feed. I've lived in a few rural locations in my day. A handful of agricultural, crop field inhabiting, agrarian countrysides. <laughs> And it's because of this that I'm aware of the fact that sometimes internet connection is just not possible. And I don't want to hear anyone tell me that the problem is my connection. I mean, it is a problem. But the main problem is how these companies utilize the internet. Me having the fastest internet on the planet wouldn't make me hate these problems any less. The original Xbox, while coming with online capabilities, didn't feel as if it relied on the internet. It still felt like you had a complete package even if you never connected it online. The 360 and beyond, however, Listen, I love my Xbox 360, but this past July, its digital storefront was shut down, and since then, it's been crippled into essentially becoming a Wii Mini. It only plays discs and any digital software you may have downloaded in the past. And good luck re-downloading it if you accidentally delete it, because you'll have to do so through an almost unusably incompatible version of Microsoft Edge. All the tabs on your home menu are gone when you go online, but unplug from the internet and Oh, there they are. And the funniest part, in order to see the covers of your digital games, you must be connected to the internet. This is me offline, this is me online. And I've never had consistent internet, or at least internet good enough for what these consoles expect, so I will end up disconnecting at some point while playing. The Xbox One's home menu was designed for advertisements. The Xbox 360 had small ads across the menu, but the Xbox One's is crammed with so many ads that the system used to crash because it couldn't download them fast enough while you were navigating the menu, taking advantage of customers that are most likely going to be connected to the internet, because that's what Xbox is for nowadays, right? games that connect to the internet. The PS4 and PS5 will also shove ads in your face when you don't want them, but these ones are, at the very least, video game related, thank god. But if you decide to disconnect from the internet, the tabs that before displayed ads now have very tacky messages saying, you're offline, please connect to the internet. No, it's not gonna happen, stop asking me. Aside from the initial setup, playing Dreams, and downloading games that I've purchased on previous systems, and updating Final Fantasy XV, my PS5 has not been connected to the internet at all, and I don't plan for that to change, really. Speaking of updates, this is probably the most diabolical example that I can think of, but let's talk about the Wii U. I will be sacrificing my copy of Mario Kart 8 for this example, so I hope that you are grateful. I have never inserted this disc into my Wii U while connected to the internet. My Wii U is completely offline. I put the disc into the console, and... Now I'm playing. Great. But let's connect my Wii U to the internet now. Fantastic. Now let's insert Mario Kart 8 into the system. 
oh, an update's available. Well, let's say hypothetically that I don't want to download this update for whatever reason. Maybe I don't have enough storage, or maybe I just don't care to update it. What's that? It won't let me play? Even though I purchased and am holding this game in my hands, you won't let me play? Wait, hold on, let's disconnect from the internet one more time. And it still won't let me play. This console had 10 seconds of internet to receive an inkling from Nintendo servers that my game isn't at its full potential, and now it has been permanently blacklisted by my console. Now, I may only play this game if I heed to my Wii U's demands, and it's going to take forever to download this because 1, it's a Wii U and it's slow as fuck, and 2, because I don't have good internet. Luckily, the Switch doesn't do this, nor does the PS5, and I'm fairly certain the newest Xbox doesn't either. Don't, don't quote me on that. But it doesn't matter to me. The possibility makes me never want to connect any of my video game systems to the internet. Let's be real, what am I going to use the internet for on my modern video game systems? I don't stream movies or TV, I don't play online games, so why would I need to have my stuff connected constantly to the internet, completely at the mercy of these companies that can allegedly do whatever they want to it? It's not like I'm going to be buying microtransactions anytime soon. Speaking of which, what was the first microtransaction in a video game? A simple Google search will tell you that Oblivion had a microtransaction selling horse armor for $250, but just one year earlier, in 2005, there was Halo 2 with its multiplayer map pack. There have been Sims expansion packs earlier. The Dreamcast, my favorite console of all time, had free downloadable content for many games. Let's look even farther back. Dungeons and Dragons expansion books have existed far before video games. But what may have started as a seemingly innocent option to buy horse armor or download Christmas festivities in Sonic Adventure has since exploded into an industry out of control, infested and riddled with microtransactions and loot boxes. Call of Duty, FIFA, Minecraft, Fortnite, Diablo. I'm so tired of hearing the phrases Battle Pass, Season Pass, Pass, pack, bundle, cosmetic. NBA is a fully priced video game that has ads in it. Fortnite's Battle Pass is just paying for the ability to unlock costumes and skins. Diablo's micro transactions, if you can even call them that at that point, cost more than the game itself. Destiny 2 has become, to quote, microtransaction hell. If a video game has this screen in it, I'm not gonna play it. Vote with your dollars, people. Stop buying this garbage. If a game features a gun nowadays, especially on the front cover, it's pretty safe to say that it offers in-game purchases. And the whole multiplayer shooter genre, with a few exceptions, has just become my no-go zone. Also, I just don't have good enough internet, so I can't really play games online anyways. Lastly, I want to talk about digital storefronts. Ever since the mid-2000s, it's been standard that a video game console has a storefront for purchasing digital games. So instead of driving to the store to buy a game, you can, in theory, buy a game digitally right on your console. Download it, and begin playing. Buy some retro games if you're a Nintendo head. Maybe buy a cheap smaller game if you have some digital funds left over. Sounds super convenient, but stores, digital or not, cost money to run, and if something costs a company money like this, it will inevitably be shut down once it's considered a liability. We've seen this multiple times. The Wii Shop channel shut down five years ago, the Wii U and 3DS stores shut down in March of 2023, the Xbox 360 marketplace shut down this past July, the PS3 is... hanging in there, for what I can only hope is years to come. Stay strong, little dude. Point is, this is a double-edged sword. While a digital storefront is a great opportunity for small developers to be able to release games without having to worry about production costs, shipping to retail locations on top of splitting the profits with retail stores, there's always this looming threat of the store closing down, causing the games on the storefront to be lost forever. Sure, some indie games are successful enough to last forever, get physical copies, be brought to PC, or ported to modern consoles, but there are countless games that aren't so lucky. It always stings to see a digital storefront shut down, and we're at the point in time where we're gonna start to see more and more leave. It's so frustrating because I love indie games so much. But the indie scene relies heavily on the internet, but I don't want to be connected to the internet because of how these consoles and the people behind them utilize it. If I learn of a digital game that I want to buy, I will connect my console to the internet, download it for like two hours because my internet bad, and then go through my download list and undo every single update that started without my permission. I don't have room for this 900 gigabyte update square. I'm sorry. Actually, no, I'm not. Do I sound like a crazy person? Am I the crazy man in movies that conspires against everything and lives in a cave in the woods? I just hate my video game systems being connected to the internet. And no, the solution is not to get faster internet. I will die on this hill. Stop using the internet in predatory ways and I'll stop getting mad at it. I enjoyed talking about indie games here. Maybe I should talk about them more. A simple Google search will tell you that Oblivion had a microtransaction selling horse armor for $2.50. They better not be mowing the yard right now. Oh my god, are you serious? No! Right when I start recording, ugh. I don't care, I'm recording anyway, so if you hear a motor mower in the background, I don't care. Oh my 